Uh, our first speaker is uh, Samantha Cohen from Cornell University. She's a senior in biomedical engineering, and she is currently an undergraduate researcher in the neural engineering lab with uh, Dr. Maram Bixson. And uh, um, she uh, is going to be talking about the contributions of skin preparation on static impedance, typically measured prior to administration of ultraconvulsive therapy. Take it away, Samantha. All right, thank you. Here we go. All right. Hello, I'm Samantha. I am a senior at Cornell University. Um, I'm researching in the neural engineering lab at City College. I'd like to thank everyone for coming, for our hosts and for Neuromatch for organizing this conference. And I will be speaking to you today about the importance of skin preparation in electroconvulsive therapy. So electroconvulsive therapy or ECT has long been a treatment for mental health disorders. The safety and efficacy of ECT has much improved over the last century, making it an effective treatment for depressive disorders when pharmacological therapies have failed. Most patients undergoing ECT treatment see relief in their depression, typically after several ECT sessions and sometimes with the addition of medications. ECT works by applying electrical pulses to the scalp via electrodes that carry current to the brain. The goal is for the current to induce a seizure in the brain, thus charges increase during treatment until a seizure threshold is reached. The brain's adaptation to the seizure is responsible for ECT's antidepressant effects. Although it is not fully understood how ECT improves depression, it is thought to promote the activation of dopamine responsive neurons. During the administration of ECT, current density is much greater in the area surrounding the electrodes than in the rest of the brain. This is because current is entering the body via the electrodes. During the setup of ECT, the impedance of the electrode is measured with currents much smaller than those of the treatment. Impedance prior to treatment is called static impedance. And both the contact area and the quality of the skin electrode interface influence static impedance. As such, they are important in the setup of treatment. In the present study, we vary the conditions under which adhesive hydrogel electrodes were prepared for ECT. During the administration of ECT, there are many different ways to prepare the skin for electroplation. Particular factors of importance include the contact area between the skin and the electrode, the adhesion between the skin and the electrode, and the cleaning solution for the skin. Preparations vary in conductive gels used and types of cleaning solutions. We were interested in how these conditions impact static impedance. After varying electrode preparation under six conditions, we then measure the static impedance across electrodes every minute until static impedance stabilized. So here we can see um, an image from our experiments. And of course, I was not applying ECT to myself. I just want to reiterate that these measurements take place prior to typical treatment. So the impedance under six conditions was measured for three healthy subjects. With many different conditions, co different combinations of prep, we selected six that would best reveal the role of each method. So during our experiment, we had saline skin preparation with pre-tac application, and pre-tac is just a common um, conductive gel used during ECT. And then we had alcohol skin cleaning with pre-tac. And then we had the normal saline skin preparation with pre-tac, but we covered half of the electrode, so that only 50% of the contact area was touching the skin. Then we had alcohol skin cleaning only with no conductive gel. And then um, we prepared our own solution to mimic the role of pre-tac, which was um, a, used with a polymer PVPK90. And we had two conditions, one with just PVPK90 and one with KCL, which is just a salt. And th those were both prepared with saline skin preparation. So for each subject, there were at least three trials for each condition. And this is accounted for in the error bar seen on the graph. Um, two commercial ECT machines were used to measure static impedance, the thymatron and the mecha. So focusing in on one e exemplary subject, we can see that all conditions with an adhesive substance had comparable impedances. We also see the decreasing surface area increases static impedance. 
and that the concentration of ions had no significant effect on impedance. These results point to the idea that variations in static impedance are largely driven by the quantity, so electrode coverage and quality from surface adhesion of the skin electrode interface. Not always when we believe there is full coverage is there also full contact. So this is seen in the center image here with poor contact. Um, so optimizing the preparation of the skin will enable the current calculated to best induce a seizure for each patient to reach the brain. Thank you all for listening to my talk and I welcome any questions. Um, yes. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, like, uh, so I guess my first question was about um, the electrodes you use. So I saw it was like, um, like two on like the front. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess, could you go back to how you did the analysis for those like electro data? Sure, let me share my screen again. Sorry. So we recorded the static impedance um, for each condition for every minute um, for a minimum of 17 minutes or until the static impedance stabilized because it would often jump um, back and forth a little bit. And so it decreases over time as we can see. And then we took the um, averages of each uh, condition for each subject. And that is what we have plotted over here. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I had a question. Um, is there is there a minimum static impedance that you that you'd like, or is there a, an optimal range that you're looking for? There is not an optimal range. Every subject will have much very different static impedances because there are a lot of factors biologically that influence it as well. Um, from like just the basic properties of your own skin duct skin conductivity to like whatever if you have like makeup on your skin or, or more oils than another person so a lot of people will vary within subjects but you tend to have similar static impedance within individuals across different time points but it, from the perspective of the ect machine is there does it perform better with some subjects than others because because of this yeah so actually when i was the subject i would tend to go like above the safety measurements of the machine. So it'll not actually apply current if your static impedance is too high because it, then it comes dangerous. Mm -hmm. So that was about um, 5,000 ohms, but most people don't have that problem. Um, and did you try anything? Um, were you only allowed to try um, pre-approved? Uh, protocols for this? Did you try something that were that you know something that you thought of might be a good adhesive or might be a good electro material? Um, so we selected PVP K90 because mm -hmm. it's very common in a lot of products. It's actually common in hair products and some food ah, products. I see. Um, so it's readily available, and um, yeah, that's why we chose that. It's accepted by the FDA. Um, so we have a question from uh, Maria Stark. Uh, if you would like to come on uh, live and ask the question, that'd be great, Marius. You can unmute yourself and ask the question whenever we're ready. That doesn't seem to be happening. So I'll, I'll just ask the question for him. Uh, I may have missed this, but did you also test if increased impedance had some effect on therapy? No, so this is just static impedance. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual therapy of ECT. So this is all like the setup process. So um, 
we're actually analyzing static impedance in relation to dynamic impedance, which is what you see during treatment and that will be discussed later, but that's not part of the study. Got it. Uh, and uh, where do you want to take the study next? Um, so it'd be really interesting to um, look more between the variability of subjects, like what makes each person so variable. Like for example, I always had a lot higher impedance than um, the other two subjects. So I think it'd be really interesting to learn what specifically makes each person have their static impedances that they do. So that way you can improve your models um, and you'd be able to calculate the best currents that would have the most efficacious treatments for ECT. Right. Uh, if there are 